And uh, I've got about four points I need to make this morning, and I'm not going to be able to do it. Because I've already been told that we got to let out early so uh -oh. the certain individuals can get to their chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going we're gonna, to we'll, we'll struggle with this and, and see if we can give you enough to get you pointed in the, direct, the right direction yes, sir. to do more in terms of preparing for a gospel revival. Amen. Amen. Beginning next week. Amen. So the first question I want to raise this morning is why should we hear the voice of the Lord? Yes. And I have several things that I believe are good reasons why. Number one, because of a sin saddened society. Our society is, is sad, but it's sad with sin. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Our society tries to justify the sins of the flesh Amen. by claiming the scripture to be falsely translated. In other words, they wanted to say what they wanted to say according to how they want to live. Amen. We have a community now known as the homosexual community. Uh, and they are trying to do away with the scripture's teaching. First Corinthians 6 and 9 you remember it says that it lists a whole bunch of things there mm -hmm. that need to be done away with because they're sinful. Right. And one of them is the term effeminate, which means a self-polluter who submits to an unnatural lust. Mm -hmm. Men with men is unnatural. Yes. Amen. And the same with women with women. Yes, sir. That's right. And we must stay with the truth. Yeah. That's right. God hasn't changed his mind no, yeah. about relationships. He did, uh, de designed them the way he wanted. Yeah. He made the woman for the man. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we must stand for what this scripture teaches. Right. And it doesn't matter how loud these voices are. In the community, we must still stand with the voice of God. That's right. And then secondly, we need to hear the voice of the Lord because of a sin-sick society. Yes. Our society is truly sick. Amen. The almighty dollar is supreme. And the attitude that many have in our communities, mm -hmm. do anything, say anything, mm -hmm. think anything, mm -hmm. as long as it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And it's everywhere prevalent. <coughs> it's all over the community, and yes, it's even in our schools. Mm -hmm. yes. Do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Well, your thing may not be what God wants done. You see, this idea of sick with sin, we're going to have to give up sin in order to hear the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, our society has become a sin-sex society. <coughs> Sex is exploited everywhere. <coughs> you can't even read a newspaper without it being exploited there. <clears throat> it's in our books, in the magazines we read, right. on television, yeah. in the movie houses, oh, yeah. Yeah. in the schoolhouse. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. I don't know where they find 
these pencil thin women uh, that are, and dress them up very scantily. Because that's not what most women look like. And at least not the ones I've seen. But that's, that, that's what sells. And, 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 and so we see it everywhere. On television and the movies, wherever you go, that's what we see. When a society becomes this corrupt, it is in danger of God's destruction. Now, there are some folks that say, well, the Lord's not going to destroy this beautiful earth. Well, if he did it once, he can do it again. Now, the Bible tells me, run over to Genesis chapter 6. I want verses 5, 3. This is the kind of attitude that we find over there in Genesis chapter 6. They were just going haywire in their lifestyle. Yeah. The Bible says. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Yes. And that every imagination of the thought. Every imagination of his heart was evil. Evil continually. Continually. And it And I'm Lord. telling you, it's just about that bad even now in America. Yeah. But not only in America, we find it worldwide. Yeah. I'm not nearly as concerned about what's happening elsewhere. But I certainly am concerned about what's happening here in America. Yeah. Read. And he repented the Lord. Now, the scripture says that he repented God. That he had made man, that he made man on the earth. In the first place. And he grieved him. And he grieved him. At his heart. To his heart. Let me tell you, you don't want to grieve God. <laughs> we don't want to get so out of bounds that it grieves God to his heart. Because when God is grieved, God can do something about it. And he did in this case. Read. And the Lord said, uh -huh. I will destroy man. I will destroy man. Whom I have created. Now God didn't have to ask anybody, may I destroy him? <laughs> he said, I will destroy him. Yeah. Why? Because I made him. Man. And I'll destroy him from the faith. Not only him, but everything. Yeah. Beasts of the field and birds of the air and fish of the sea. Yeah. God says, I'll clean it up. Yeah. I'll get rid of the whole bundle of wax. Yeah. Read. For you repenteth me uh -huh. that I have made them. Read. But Noah found now, grace in the heart of the Lord. Here is our salvation. Amen. Yeah. That man was, well, was terrible and God decided to get rid of all of them. But thank God that was one man. Amen. Yeah that found grace in the eyes of God. Amen. And that man, God used to replenish the earth after he destroyed the rest. Amen. So I don't want us to get the idea that this is just some kind of story that we read. We can find out that there's much that corroborates this story Amen. in the land where it happens. Yes. So, our God is saying to us, Hear ye the words of the Lord. Amen. Now, when we look over there in Genesis chapter 19, in verses 4 through 9, we see two angels visiting Lot. And the men of Sodom tried to take them by force. They were in such a uh, bad condition over there. Yeah. They wanted them not pleading with them, don't bother these men. I got a daughter, I got virgin girl, I'll give them to you. Don't bother these men. They didn't want the girl, they wanted the men. That's how bad this society was. Yes. And someone said, well, the men just wanted to know them. Well, I want you to know that they know in verse 5 here means the same as the no in chapter 4 verse 1. Yes. When Adam knew Eve and along came Cain. Amen somebody. So that's what we're talking about. That 
uh, that, that kind of behavior. And secondly, what shall we hear when we hear the word of the Lord? Yes. And I'm, uh, I'm persuaded to believe that there are still some people that are preaching the word of God. Amen. Now we'll find a little bit of, of other stuff creeping in around, but there are some that are still holding on to doing exactly what God says do. Amen. Words of condemnation for our sins is what we need to hear. We need to recognize that man is a sinner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Romans 3.10, there is none righteous. No, not one. Amen. Verse 23 says, all have sinned right. mm -hmm. and come short of the glory of God. That means you and me. Mm -hmm. Everybody missed the mark from time to time. But the Bible tells us, Romans 5 and 12, wherefore in one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Mm -hmm. And so death passed upon all men. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned. Yes. And so we can't escape sin in the world unless we have what God has provided. Yes. You see, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Death here means separation from God eternally. <coughs> but not only do we have the, the sin problem, we need the words of condemnation for our sin. Right. Secondly, we need words of invitation. Right. Because God is not leaving us alone. He's done all he can to help us be reconciled to him. Amen. But we have to want to be reconciled. Right. And this word reconciled simply means to be made friends again right. with God. Isaiah 118 tells us to come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Yes. We say it to be a scarlet, they should be white as snow. And though to be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yes. God can take care of the sin matter if we only allow him. So we have the words of invitation from God himself. And secondly, we have the invitation from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. So we have a place to go with our sin. We just have to be willing to do it. And so, the matter is, we have the invitation. Mm -hmm. And John 6, and verse 37, Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Yeah. The invitation is open to everybody. Come to me. I have what you need. And if you come to Jesus, he says, I won't turn you away. And then we also have that word in Revelation 3 and verse 20, where it tells us that uh, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. If you open to me, I'll come in and sit with you and you with me. Yes. We need to realize that Jesus is constantly knocking on the door of our heart. Yes. It is up to us to they have enough courage to open it up and let him come in. Right. Amen. As I've told you many times before, he'll knock on the door, but he's not going to break it down. Amen. You're going to have to open it willingly and let him come into your life. Amen. But not only do we need words of invitation, we also need words of salvation. Amen. I'm talking about hearing the words of the Lord. John 3, 7, we know the story there when Nicodemus, the great the doctor of the law, came to Jesus by night and began to talk to him about things that he was doing mm -hmm. and, and saying, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Yes. Because no man can do the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. 
except God be with him. Amen. Well, Jesus wasn't, 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 wasn't buttered up with that kind of comment. He just said, you must be born again. And of course, uh, Nicodemus uh, raised the issue, how? You know, he was thinking of physical birth. The Lord's talking about a different kind. Right. He said, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. Amen. So we need to realize that God has made a plan. What we need to do is hear what God has to say. Amen. John 3, 16 tells us that God loved the world. Yes. Loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has done what he wants to do. Now a lot of folk want to say, well, uh, well, God is trying to condemn men. No, 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 don't think that. If you're there at uh, John 3, uh, read verses 17 and 18 for me. Most of the time we don't bother reading that. Uh, but that's why the, the crux of the matter. You see, when Jesus came here, he came with a purpose. Amen. We needed him. Yeah. He didn't need us. God didn't need us. We needed him. So God sent God. Amen. God the Son. Yeah. That he become man. And get us back to God again. John 3, 17 says what? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's what I want you to know. A lot of people think that, that, that that's why Jesus came, to condemn the world. God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him, the world through him saved. might be saved. He that believeth on him, he that believeth on him, is not condemned. Is not condemned. But he that believeth, but not, he that believeth not on him, is condemned, is condemned already. Because he hath not believed, and he hath not believed. only begotten on the Son of God. The Son of God. <laughs> so God was trying to help man when He sent Jesus. What we need to do is accept him Amen. and accept what he, what he has, uh, has to say. Mm -hmm. So we have words of salvation. Yes. Romans 5 and 8, the Bible tells us that God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it, 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 it's, it's a great bit of teaching in the book of Romans. In Texas, we... We, we went all over that this past week. That, that was our theme book. But uh, when we think about what Jesus did, we ought not to ever have a service where we don't point to the cross yes. and, and recognize the, the great gift that Jesus gave us. That's right. And not because uh, we deserved it, mm -hmm. but he did it because he loved us. Amen. That's it. And he wants us back in relationship with God. Amen. So while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Mm -hmm. And then when we read on further, he finally, before he went back home to heaven, he gave the great commission. Mark 16, 15 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes, Men are continuing to reject that. I'm calling on us to hear the words of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to realize that what the Lord has said is going to stand and we're going to face it again one day. That's true. St. John chapter 12 and by verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejected me and received not my word has one to judge him in the last days. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. Yes. So we need words of condemnation for our sins. We need words of invitation, and we need words of salvation. Yes, sir. Hear ye the words of the Lord. Amen. So I raise one question for them. What are the hindrances to hearing the word of the Lord? All right. You see, there are a lot of hindrances that folks throw them up all the time. Mm -hmm. But the person who throws them up more than anybody else is Satan. Oh yes, he, he got all kind of, of hindrances. Because 
He knows that man has a love of sin and worldliness. And it's getting so bad that we're trying to bring it even in the Lord's church. Amen. And I'm saying to us, we're going to stand firm and stand against any contamination of worldliness being brought into the sanctuary of the Lord. Amen. We must stay with what the Word tells us. In Matthew 13, 22, when Jesus explained the parable of the sower, he, he, he mentioned this. The one that received the seed among the thorns is he that hear the Word. And then the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and he becomes untruthful and unfaithful. How many times have we seen this happen? When a person obeyed the gospel but the cares of the world and chokes them out and soon they're drawn back in the old patterns and old lifestyle. We need to understand that Satan is constantly busy and even when you obey the gospel, he's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to leave the one alone who's been in the church 50 years. He's always looking for somebody. John 3, 19 and 20. This is the condemnation of the light is coming to the world and the men love darkness rather than light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Darkness has to do with sin. Mm -hmm because their deeds were evil. Everyone, he said, that doeth evil hateth the light, and neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So, they don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. But I'm challenging us, let us continue to hear the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we allow Satan to steal the word out of our hearts. Mm. Matthew 13 and 19. Anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, mm. catching away that which was sown in his heart. Mm. I used to have a group here. I wasn't sure they did it every Sunday, but. I, I, was, I learned that they was having Rose Preacher right after the services. Mm. Every Sunday. Rose well, Rose Preacher was me. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't present, but they were, they, they were having it anyway. Yeah. And, and what was happening, Satan was taking the word out of their heart yeah. before it had a, any opportunity to help them. And then they wanted to blame the preacher for this and that and, and so on. Well, I didn't mind that so much. Because I knew what my job was. Mm -hmm. I was to preach the word. Amen. I can't do any more than that. Amen. Now you have to receive it for yourself. Amen. But I'm challenging you, don't turn away from God. Amen. Because God is going to have the last word. Amen. Amen. And that's what he was telling Israel here in our text. Mm -hmm. In fact, he says uh, to Jehoiakim, I'm going to cut you off and that won't be a, a, an heir of your family ever again. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, God can do just that. Yes. And so, we are saying, don't allow Satan to steal the word out of your heart. We realize that he is like a roaring lion, 1 Peter 5 and 8, yeah. seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. We must remember this. Satan is a liar. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and he's the father of them according to scripture. And we can see some of the lies of what they have done to those who are children of God. It was lies that caused Jesus' death. Jesus hadn't done anything to deserve a crucifixion. But it was lies brought by the the, 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 the Jewish leadership mm -hmm. and pressing the Roman government to sentence him to death. Mm -hmm. 
And it was lies that brought the Apostle Paul against him. Acts 25 and 7. Mm -hmm. But when Paul defended himself, I tell you, old Festus uh, didn't want to deal with him anymore. When he, Festus was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about, laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. They were all lies. But Paul wasn't deterred. He continued to preach the word. Amen. And then we also have hypocrisy. Pretenders of righteousness is a hindrance to hearing the word of the Lord. Get for me Ezekiel 33. I want verse 30 through 32. If you're there, go ahead and read. Also, thou son of man, uh -huh. the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls. Now, I, 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 tell, I tell the young preachers, uh, oh yes, you may hear people look you in the face and tell you how much uh, you, you, you sound and how good and all, but don't forget, when they get away, they stand by the wall, well, and they might have another another message. <laughs> so here was a preacher who when he he preached they didn't say it to his face but they went and stood somewhere but God warned him what was happening. Read. And speak one to another uh -huh. every one to his brother Read. saying come I pray you and hear what is the word that comes forth from the Lord. Yes. And they come unto thee and the people cometh and they sit before thee as my people. Uh -huh. And they hear thy words, but Read. they will not do them. That's the problem. Hypocrites. They hear my word, but they will not do it. They sit before you as my people. They act like they are sincere and serious. And they hear my word, and they won't do it. Read. For with their mouth they that, show much love. With their mouth they show much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. Uh-huh, their heart goes after their covetousness. And lo, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song uh -huh. of one that hath a pleasant voice Read. and can play well on an instrument. Yes. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. That's it. They are saying you sound good and sweet, it's just like a, a, a sweet playing instrument. They hear your word, but they do them not. Amen. So hypocrisy can stop us from hearing the word of the Lord. And then I'm gonna try one more before I call it a day today. What are the results of refusing to hear the word of the Lord? I think that's important for us to know. If we refuse, then we must know God is going to have the last word. They shall seek God, but they won't find Him. You see, when we refuse to hear the word of the Lord, there's going to come a time when you're going to need the Lord. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow. It may not be next week. But there'll come a time in your life when you'll need the Lord. Now, when you won't hear what the Lord has to say, then we're we, 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 we going to have to suffer whatever the wrath is. In Proverbs, the first chapter, this is one of my favorite texts, dealing with not hearing what the Lord has to say. Starting at verse 24 to 28, the Bible says, because I have called, God said I called, and He refused. And you refused. I have stretched out my hand. I stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. And no man regarded. But ye have set at naught. You said not all my counsel. My counsel, and with none of my reproof. And wouldn't even uh, adhere to my reproof. God had been trying to work with him, 
and they refused. And now he's saying by the wise man, what's going to happen? Read. I also will laugh at your calamity. I'm going to laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. I'm going to mock when your fear comes. When your fear cometh as desolation. When fear cometh as desolation. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. And destruction is a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you. Distress and anguish come upon you. Then shall they call upon me. Then. Then is when you're going to call on me. But I will not answer. And I won't answer. They shall seek me early. They'll seek me early. But they shall not find And they me. shall not find let me tell you, you don't want to get in a position where God won't hear. That's right. Where you seek Him and He you can't find. That's what I'm saying. We need to remember. We need to hear to what the Lord said. That's why He called the whole land to hear Amen. the word of the Lord. Amen. And so we're saying to children of God, we need to hear what God has to say. Yeah. Because there's a time when we may need him in the worst condition. And because we have turned away, he has turned away from us. Amen. So we need to remember. Now the Bible also tells us that the result of refusing to hear the word of the Lord is going to bring about a fall. <clears throat> you remember in Matthew 7, 24 to 27, well, if you, if you remember Matthew 7, 21 to 23, uh, he talks there about not everyone that called me Lord right. is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And uh, see, there's some going to say, well, Lord, I've done this, I've done that, and your name, and he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You work a little day. And then he said, there's some others that hear these sayings of mine and do them, and there's building the house on a rock. The winds are going to come. And the winds are going to blow and the floods are going to come. And be on the house. And it fell not because it was founded on the rock. Amen. But he also said there's some others that built their house on the sand. The wind is still going to come. The floods are going to come. And be on that house. And it fell, and great was the fall thereof. Amen. All I'm saying is, we need to make sure that we're building our house on a solid rock. Amen. And that rock is none other than Jesus. Amen. We need to stand with Jesus. Because if we build our house on anything other than Jesus, when the floods come and the winds blow, it's going to fall. And great will be the fall thereof. Amen. Well, we also deceive ourselves. James 1, 22 through 25. I, I don't have time to deal with that, but go take a look. And then go look in the mirror and see what you see. And don't walk away and forget what you saw. But the mirror I want you to look into is God's mirror. Yes. See if you measure up. So, as I close in this morning, we want to ask the question, what are the results of hearing the word of the Lord? Well, I want you to know that it has a benefit that's going to help all of us because we will have eternal life with Christ Jesus. John 10, 27 to 29. Jesus said, my sheep uh, will hear my voice. Yes. And I know them, right. and they know me. Mm -hmm. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. Yes. They'll never perish. Amen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Right. Mm -hmm. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able mm -hmm. to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Amen. I'll tell you when God put His hand on you. You're going to be in a safe condition. Amen. So I'm calling on the members of the church to hear ye the words of the Lord. Yes. The need is urgent, my brothers and sisters, for individuals to listen to the voice of the Lord. Hearing and doing is necessary. 
if we didn't stand justified before our God. Mm -hmm. Romans 2 and verse 13. Job 4, team 1 and 2 has us understand man born a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Yes. Yeah. Coming forth like a flower and cut down and flees also of a shadow and continues not. Yes. I want you to know that life is fragile. That's what he's saying. Yes. It's very real. Amen. We don't have time to be playing around. Amen. Fooling around and putting God off until some other time. Amen. I want you to know that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. He's also our God. Amen. And he's calling on us to be faithful even today. Yes. Even in a world like ours. Come on. Who is full of sin and, right. and sex and everything else that can be named. Mm -hmm. God is still wanting his people to stand tall and be what he's heaven to be. Right. So life is fragile. Right. Yes. And it is brief. First Peter 1, 24 says it's all flesh in his grass. And the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. Mm -hmm. The grass withers, the flower thereof falls away. But he that doeth the will of God yeah. endures well. Amen. We need to realize we're going to need God on our side. Right. Psalm 39, 4 and 5, I hear the old psalmist. Yes. When he got a little bit old, says, Oh Lord, uh, make me to know my need mm -hmm. and the measure of my days. Yes. You see, Wanted to know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Yes. Behold, thou hast made me days as a hand breath. In other words, he said, my life yes. is nothing more than the breath of your hand. Mm -hmm. You made it that way for me. And my age is as nothing before thee. Yes. We need to realize that it doesn't matter how many years we live on earth, it's like nothing in the sight of Almighty God. Amen. We need to recognize that God is calling us today. Yes. Hear ye yes. uh -huh, the words of the Lord. Yes. We need to realize that God has spoken mm -hmm. and He's not going to take it back. Amen. He wants us to be faithful. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be energetic. Yes. We have a great meeting that's coming up next week. Mm -hmm. We want to do more than we've done in time past. Amen. We want to do more to have men and women here who need to hear the gospel. Yes. We now want to do more to make sure that we are here yeah. in person to help support and encourage our efforts. Yeah. I'm calling on the church of La Puente to hear ye yes. the words of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Today is the day of suffering. There are some who say, well, I'm not quite ready yet. Let me tell you, you're never going to be ready until you make up your mind that you're lost and you need God. Yes. And there's nothing you can do in the world that's going to help you. Only God can help the same situation. Amen. So we're calling on you today to think seriously about your life and where you stand with God and what would happen if He called you home today. You'd have no chance at all. But you can leave this place a Christian or child of God if you'll only hear the words of the Lord. You need to hear the words of the gospel. How did Jesus live? How he died? Mary rose again the third day according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. You need to hear that he went back home to heaven. Mm -hmm. And he dispatched the Holy Spirit and established the church of Christ. Yes. The one you can read about in the Bible. Yeah. You need to be a member of that church. Yeah. You need to hear the word and believe the same. Mm -hmm. Acts 15 and 7. You need to repent of your sins. Turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, Acts 2.38. Yes. You need to confess Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of God. Yes. Acts 8 and verse 37. And then submit to baptism in water for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. That's a simple plan that God has given. Yes. Now man has given all kinds of plans. Say the sinner's prayer and so on. Well, you can say the sinner's prayer all you want. But the sinner's prayer has never saved anyone and it's not going to save anyone in the future. Amen. Only God can save you. Amen. You need to be where salvation is, and salvation is in Christ. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 2 and 10. You need to be in Christ. The only way to get into Christ is to be baptized into Christ. Amen. Amen.
So if you're here today and you're not a child of God, now is a good time to hear the words of the Lord. Yes. Maybe you're a Christian who needs to be restored. Come on back home to God. Yes. You know what you need to do. Confess your fault. Let the brothers pray for you. Yes. And you can be restored to your rightful place. Yes. yes. Maybe you haven't done anything. You just got you got a struggle you're going through. I'm telling you, you ought to be glad to serve a God that can help. Amen. So bring it to the Lord and leave it there. Yes. Amen. Come on and, and let the church know that you need help. Yes. You need God's help. Amen. We may not be able to help you individually, but we know one who can. Yes, sir. And we plead with him on your behalf. Yes. To help you with whatever your situation is. Yes. Whatever it is today, Jesus is the answer. And we encourage you to come and 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 then hear what he has to say yeah. this morning. Amen. Will you do it? Then do it right now. While the killer is there, let's see. I 